Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I interview a digital marketer, and we began to discuss customer relationship management tools, better known as a CRM. So let's dig into it. What is a CRM? Why is it important? And why should an entrepreneur care? As I mentioned, CRM stands for Customer Relations Management. It's a technology used to manage interactions with customers and potential customers. A CRM system helps organizations build customer relationships and streamline processes so they can increase sales, improve customer service, and increase profitability. Ever heard of Salesforce? That's a CRM. But there are many out there, and they provide support for various reasons, sales, analytics, collaborative work, operations, and so much more. One way I use a CRM is to help me stay on track. Now, I'm not going to drop any names of any systems. However, if there are CRM systems listening that they want to be highlighted, we can chat about establishing a new deal. My phone lines are always open for collaborative work. How a CRM keeps me on track is the one I use reminds me of who I sent an email to, when, days since last reply, identity, and I can identify them as a potential guest, former guest, collaborator, or other. A CRM also allows me to send bulk emails, like a newsletter, coming soon, and I can create an email sequencing too. Here is why that is cool. Currently, the shadesofe.com website, visitors can apply to be on the show. In fact, I have had several guests on this show that have applied through the website. Hint, hint for any of those interested in being a guest on the show. The application asks for specific information that I then sync into the CRM. Now, when I go to send out a generic email of either thanking the guests for their interest or the next step in scheduling, the user's name and information is automatically pulled from the application and into the email, such as the name, business name, website, phone, email. Using the CRM, I can track my process with the contact, hence the customer relations management name. The system is helping you manage customer relationship in various ways. A CRM can also track website visits and help the entrepreneur determine if certain pages are doing well versus others or blog posts or videos. Using the CRM analytics, I can pivot to provide more preference to the end user. For example, maybe I see end users visiting a certain blog post or a specific topic like CRM. I may revisit that topic on the podcast or highlight it in a newsletter as it appears to be of high interest to the end user, targeting consumer interests and not what I perceive as a consumer interest. The beauty of the CRM is they truly can be used by anyone. Sales web, marketing teams, customer relationship teams, podcast hosts. And this is why the CRM is important. I stated that there are many variations of a CRM on the market and is a very saturated industry. And it will ultimately depend on what the entrepreneur needs and can afford, which is also important to understand. A good CRM may cost the entrepreneur around $300 annually. There are free CRMs available, but they do come with limited support and functionality. However, when starting off a small, it's always smart to start with the basics. Many of these CRMs provide free demos and trial periods. Use them. I cannot even begin to tell you folks about how many trial periods I have done or meeting with sales reps I've had. It is very important to test the product before making a commitment, like a car, clothes, Costco food. Always have to try those free samples at Costco. And that is why the entrepreneur should care. Determining what the entrepreneur needs first is vital in fighting the right CRM system. I, too, am still determining which system is best for me. In fact, I have even inquired if some of these companies would be interested in being a sponsor of a podcast. There are deals to be made every day, and a CRM helps keep the entrepreneur moving on those deals. Tracking phone calls, emails, newsletters, mailers, marketing campaigns. These are just some of the many things a CRM can help the entrepreneur perfect. It's not about working harder. It's about working smarter. And if you ask me, I have the smartest listeners in the world. And for you all, I will continue to work harder so we can all get smarter together. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy.
enjoy the show. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome the co-owner of Classy Sassy Digital Marketing. Very interesting uh, name. I'm very excited. Shannon, how are we doing? Good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on the show. Very excited. Very interested to kind of hear about what you guys are doing. But first, let's introduce the world to Shannon. Please give him a little background. Who is Shannon? Well, I am a mom of four crazy teenagers. Um, been married to a long haul truck driver for quite a few years. I was born and raised in Southern California, but have been in Oregon for about 17 years now. And I've just fallen in love with it. Um, I have been a foster parent. We were foster parents for six years. I have an associate's in accounting, a bachelor's in business. But most recently, I have attended BAM University. Nice. Nice. So for the listeners at home, what is Classy Sassy Digital Marketing? (laughs) Classy and Sassy is a digital marketing company where we help businesses grow. So if you were to Google concrete in Portland, we try to get those businesses up in those first three listings and definitely on the first pages of Google to increase their revenue. Nice. And how, how do you go about doing that without, without giving away the trade secrets, of course? Well, basically, we kind of do an audit of their website. We optimize their website. So... Google is pulling certain things and looking at their social media, looking at their website. And it's basically telling Google, Hey, this is a great business. You need to showcase them. What, what would people, so for example, if I'm, I'm trying to start something and I want to push it out there, what are some common mistakes that we'd make? Like thinking I want to go viral. All right. I want to put something online to make it big. What are some common mistakes you see? The most common mistakes I see are, Business owners not budgeting for marketing, not investing in themselves. Um, It is not free to do. And you need to have a good, solid foundation for it. Your website is your business card. And then Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all that kind of feeds off of it and relates to one another. Just giving you, it's more of a popularity contest on the internet. So how did did this whole concept come up? How did you kind of, what's what's your experience in the digital world? Well, actually I have, I've always worked helping others. I'm a giver's gain kind of a thing. I have worked HR for staffing agencies where I've helped employees find work and I've helped employers find good employees. I, the most recent prior to this, I have worked for local school district, sorry, district for six years. So I was helping kiddos and helping the teachers and everything else. Um, Unfortunately, my husband was diagnosed with colon cancer, stage three, which luckily he is in remission right now, but it was a wake up call. I loved what I was doing at the school, but if something were to happen to him, I have to be able to take care of my kiddos. I got to keep a roof over their head. And a relative of his had been in digital marketing for over 10 years. And he had talked to my husband about getting into it before and whatnot. Um, But once this hit, it was kind of like, let's look into it a little bit more. And he uh, hooked me up with BAM University and I started all my training and have fallen in love with it. I get to still help others and watch them grow and succeed. So that's how I've gotten into it. Would you, how would you say, would you say that was like kind of the catalyst to motivate you to kind of get into this? Absolutely. I had to, I was comfortable working at the school. And 
I had to really step out and get out of my own way and grow. I had to put myself out there and get out of my comfort zone. And that, I mean, that's hard. That's nobody really likes change and everything. But the more I got into it, the more and more I loved it. And seeing these businesses not only meet, but exceed their goals, hire another employee, expand their market. It has been so rewarding. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. I can, I'm actually enjoying it. It's not just a job to me. I live it. I can take it anywhere with me and I really do enjoy it. You know, one, one thing you said, um, you got to get out of your comfort zone. Right. And, and I, I truly do believe that. And that's something I talk about to students often is in order for you to grow, right. Either personally and professionally, you kind of got to get out of your comfort zone. And sometimes that means either a new profession or even just getting out of the country or getting out of your state or getting out of your County lines. Right. Why was, why was getting out of your kind of comfort zone important for you? Well, I am not big on sales. I don't like cold calling and one thing when you're starting a digital marketing company is you, I mean, how are people going to know about you? And so I've really had to reach out. I mean, I've been told no a hundred times and I'm okay with that, you know, and a lot of these businesses that understand a little bit about digital marketing, but understand the importance of it have been burned by a lot of digital marketers. Mm-hmm. So I've had to kind of fight that battle and let them know, hey, I'm different. I'm not looking just to, you know, take your money and run. I want to build that relationship. I don't want just a company that's just even be blow Joe off the street. I want to build that relationship and truly su- watch them succeed. What would you say has been the difficult part about building this business? Definitely getting your name out there. Um and, and, and the cold calling and the cold messaging, that is probably the hardest part. Yeah. And I think that's, it's kind of funny when you're starting a new business, I think people, you know, forget that the, the cold calling still works, you know, and, and sliding into the DMs, right. Works as well. Uh, getting your name out there organically in that way. So how did you, did you have to go through, um, any venture capital to start this business or was this kind of grassroots effort? How did you finance it? Well, luckily my husband and I had a little nest egg saved up. Um, and that is how I've done it all. I started on just a laptop and I have moved to a desktop with two computer screens when I have room for it, I actually have three computer screens going. <laughs> and if, if you have a phone and you have the drive and a computer, you can do it. You don't have, you, you don't have all the tools until you start making a little bit of money. Um, but there's ways out there to do it. Now, is this your first business? The other business we own is my husband's trucking company, but it's just him. He's just an owner operator, but this is the first business that I've truly seen from start to ongoing. <laughs> what, what's been hard? Drumming up the business, getting the name out there. That is the hardest part. How do you do it? Cold calling, DMs. Um, if I'm researching for one company and I see that another website is not secured or, you know, they just don't have what Google's looking for on their website. I'll call them up and say, Hey, I noticed this. Can I send you a quick little video with some tips to help you out? And so for you, like as a, as a new entrepreneur, right, you're kind of jumping into this venture. What, what is, what have you felt that's different between, you know, your old role in the teaching world where you had a consistent paycheck versus being an entrepreneur where you're like, you're saying, the hardest part is trying to get, you know, consistent cash flow. You know, the nice part is I'm not answering to anyone besides my clients. I do answer to them to a certain degree. Right. Right. But if my daughter has a soccer game, I can go to that. I can schedule meetings around it. I have the more of the freedom. I was able to go on the road for two weeks with my husband and still do work because I had my phone. I had my laptop. And I was able, the freedom has been great. 
Nice. Now, what what keeps you up at night as an entrepreneur? What what are what are some things that keep you up? The constant thought of growing the business, of getting the name out there. Uh, I also, if I'm working on a proposal, I can't shut my brain off. I want to make sure I've covered every aspect that's going to help them. I've looked at every keyword that they need on their website and just making sure I cover everything to meet their needs. My brain does not turn off. Now what, what, let's flip it around. What has been easy, if, if anything? The easy part has been building the relationships once you get your foot in the door. They realize you are a human. You, they're not just another number to somebody. It's somebody that you actually care for. So actually building the relationship has been the easiest part once you get in the door. You know, one of the things you've been mentioning pretty consistently is relationships, right? Not clients, right? Or relationships. Um, where it, it's, it's obviously important as you move forward and you're, you're capturing a lot of different um, individuals and you're meeting these um, people and sparking these conversations. Where do you store all this information? How do you kind of remind yourself to follow up and, and these kind of keep yourself on track? What kind of tactics do you use? I have a lot of Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> I use my calendar religiously for everything. So if I know a client said, hey, follow up with me in a month, right there, it goes in my calendar, follow up in a month. And with a little note of why I'm following up or make sure you send this report for so-and-so on this date. My calendar, my Excel sheets have been huge. Now there are CRM software out there that you can utilize. At this point, I'm just relying on my Excel spreadsheets. I've always used them. <laughs> yeah. Now, now for, for the folks at home, what, what is a CRM? Can you kind of explain it for the folks at home? Just kind of your kind of understanding of it. It's a software that you put in every person that you talk to. You can put notes in, you can, you know, their phone number, contact, everything goes in there. And again, it's like a reminder. It puts them, you can even set them up where they're in certain steps of the process. Like you need to follow up this date, follow up this date. So it's, it's a great software to utilize. Yeah. I, I, I must admit, you know, folks that are listening, uh, if you are definitely getting into like the sales world or relationship world where you're, you're going to meet a lot of contacts, definitely look at some various CRMs because they are, they are useful. Um, however, nothing in this world is free, right? <laughs> so, so they, they do cost some money. Now let's talk about the brand a little bit. Um, I I'm very interested. How did, where'd the name come from? And, and, you know, let's, let's kind of talk about classy, sassy digital marketing. Where, where did that originate from? So classy and sassy kind of came up is I can be classy when I need to, but I'm also sassy. Same with my husband. You know, we can dress up with the best of them, but we're just down to earth people that we're, we're sassy. You know, we don't, we're an open book and the, the running joke is we don't know which one's classy and which one's sassy. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it was part of, there was something out there. I don't know if I kept seeing it on Facebook, but there was a shirt that said classy, sassy, and a little bit smart ass. And that was just kind of, it kept sticking with me. And so classy and sassy just arose from there. And the joke is we don't know which one's which. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing you've also kind of mentioned pretty consistently is your husband uh, throughout this, this podcast. How important has he been to your, you know, success as an entrepreneur? He has been very important. He has been um, the main funder and everything of it, of my little you know, software and stuff, tools that I need. But he's my drive. Besides my kids, he is my drive. My ultimate goal will be to get him off the road 100% and have him working doing this with me. Nice. Now, who would you kind of say is your client? Your, your, what would you identify as your target client? That's hard. Um, I do a lot with a various different niches. I love working with concrete contractors, real estate agents, uh, influencers I'm actually starting to work with. Nice. So there's a lot out there in various niches. 
contracting is one of my favorite niches to work with though. Nice. What would you say that is something that you've learned throughout this process that surprised you as a small business owner? Like what are some like, maybe, like maybe the paperwork or. You know, with being an office manager, the paperwork, that sort of thing I've been comfortable with. What was the most surprising to me is what all goes into a website and what the reasons for it. Before I got into this, I Googled everything. I yeah, needed yeah. someone to fix my gutters. I Googled it. Very true. The very few people got some quotes, moved on. I never realized why they're in the position they're in on Google, how they got there, the analytics behind it, and everything that goes into it and all the technical side of it. So that has been the biggest surprise and the biggest learning experience for me. What a little kind of uh, tidbits could you give folks at home if they're trying to build their own website? Like myself, I'm trying to build my own website right now. What, what tips do you have for me? Don't do it because <laughs> it's stressful, I'm telling you. You know, if you want it to rank, if you want people to find you, hire a marketer. And, you know, it needs to be someone that you can connect with, you can trust because that is your livelihood that they're helping you with. And that is the biggest thing. Um, I, If you don't have experience with it, I highly recommend I mean, there's a lot of platforms out there that, oh, you build your own website, which you can, and you'll make it look amazing. But unless you know all the analytics and everything, you're just building a pretty page. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, The analytics piece is is so foreign to me, really, Uh, because to your point, I didn't know you need to think about all these little things in the background. Was it SEOs and all these fancy things and jargon that I'm just completely unfamiliar with. Now, why, why did you decide the digital world? You, you, you know, you're from the teaching world. Did you kind of already have an appetite for it or were you just like, I just want to try something completely new. I wanted to try something completely new and I enjoy challenges and I enjoy research and a lot, there's a lot of challenges that pop up. Every company is different. Every need is different. So you don't have a cookie cutter version that you can just go, oh, here's your website and just plug in their names. It's not like that. You have to have the right amount of content, keywords, a lot of, like you said, technical stuff that goes into it. And I've just come across it. Now I enjoy it and I love it. I love it. So what's, what's the plan? What's the goal for Classy Sassy Digital Marketing in the next five years? Next five years, I would like to um, hit probably 40 new clients. My short-term goal for this year is 10 new monthly clients doing SEO. And then I would like to be able to where I can hire others, you know, whether they want to just work from home, want a little bit more freedom. That way I can hire them. They can I can train them. I mean, it, I can train them. It, it it does take time, but I, I'm willing to do it, you know, and someone that'll want to grow with me too. So yeah, over the next 10 years, I definitely want to be able to hit six figures, get my husband off the road and get my kids' cars paid off. I like it. I like if And if, I, if you have any left over, you can pay off one of my cars. <laughs> <laughs> Bought them cars and now I don't have a car. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> How'd that work out? <laughs> So at the end of the, you know, the end of the show, we definitely want to in, ensure that the listeners have your contact information. So how do they get in contact with you? What's your website, social media channels, let the listeners know. Absolutely. So my website is classy and sassy digital marketing.com on Facebook. I'm under classy and sassy digital marketing. I'm on LinkedIn under Shannon Nelson and I'm on Instagram too. classy, sassy digital marketing. Shannon, thank you so much for your time to come talk to us. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.